Life isn't always about being in complete control. There are times where you have to adjust to what life throws at you to get where you are destined to be. For retired Sergeant Major Lynn Holt, his choice to take control during the draft allowed him to find a path that would lead him to bigger and better things. Having a very young family and a very low draft number and some friends that were in the National Guard, I, uh, I tried to get in the National Guard uh, back in 1970 and was successful and I decided I was signing up for a six-year hitch and 33 years later I got out. Born and raised in Topeka, Kansas, Lynn Holt enjoyed everything that his hometown had to offer. Back then you were either an athlete in high school or you played in a band and so I played in a band. Uh, played bass guitar with a uh, uh, soul group called the Majestics. One of the fun jobs we had doing that was um, played the USO when it was in Topeka every other Sunday night. Uh, the soldiers from uh, Forbes were out there a lot and uh, any soldiers passing through so that was rewarding. As the timer ticked down for his lottery number to be selected for the draft, Sergeant Major Lynn Holt decided to take control of his life. Lynn Holt enlisted and started serving meals for the Kansas National Guard. This started an itch to serve as fellow guardsmen that would last well beyond his military career. I joined as a unit personnel clerk, but when it came time to go to basic training, uh, the only thing that was available was a cook. So that was my first job in the military. You'd get up about three o'clock in the morning because you had to do breakfast, and then you did lunch, and then you did the evening meal. And you would get off somewhere between six and eight to 10 in the evening, and it would start over the next day. It was fun. It was full of challenges, especially when you went to the field. If it was raining, you still had to prepare food because all the troops had to, had to eat, whether it was raining or not. After sending numerous applications to get a full-time position, Sergeant Major Holt finally landed a full-time job as a unit supply specialist for the 169th Support Battalion. However, it was not a happy occurrence that got him the position. At the time, I worked for a local music company in Topeka, and I was wanting to get a job with the National Guard. And uh, a good friend, uh, Sergeant First Class Clarence Misher, would give me uh, job applications. And one evening I received a phone call from his wife that she had put him in the hospital with a brain aneurysm. And he passed that evening at midnight. And ironically, the jobs that he was trying to get me, I ended up with my good friend's job at the end. So all of a sudden we had a major uh, supply inspection two weeks after I took the job. Uh, which didn't do well and uh, I got a lot of uh, information from the inspectors who, who were guardsmen on what I needed to do being a brand new soldier in that job. So it was very hectic, a lot of long hours, but uh, it proved to be very, a very uh, good move. You know, I had to inventory the pots and pans, not clean them after that. Lynn Holt's dedication and hard work helped set him apart from other soldiers in the Kansas National Guard. He was hand-selected to help set the foundation for the newly formed mechanized unit for the 35th Infantry Division. Where you go to annual training as a division is, is interesting because it's, it's a large unit, so we've had several excitements. Uh, we had a tornado at annual training at that point and making sure everybody was safe. You know, you kind of change modes there from, uh, at least in, in our shop, in the personnel shop, you kind of change mode from the, from the training mode to the real mode is making sure all of our people were safe, making sure that everybody was accounted for, everybody got back in. If you just hear that a tornado hit where your, where your uh, soldier's at, you're going to want to know that they're safe. It hit the news that there was a, a tornado while the 35th Division was in Pena Canyon, so you know the calls, uh, working with the Red Cross, we worked with the Red Cross a lot on uh, making sure that the phone calls were answered for the people back home because 
Luckily, I don't believe there was, there might have been some tents blown over and some other things like that, but you know, I don't believe we sustained any personnel type damage, which we were fortunate. Leadership took notice of Lynn Holt's diligence towards his work and brought him up to Joint Force Headquarters where his skills were needed. He traveled across the state of Kansas supporting guard units with personal issues. We would go to annual training though every year uh, and be the one shop or personnel for the state. We did a very good job with that because uh, the people that was from the G1 shop at uh, the Joint Force Headquarters, very personnel-minded people. So they, you know, they were caring. When we would go to annual training is the day the boots hit the ground until the day we left, irregardless whether we were in the office, in the rack, going to sleep, out lunch, we were always accessible. There was no downtime for us. Even though Lynn Holt was passionate about the Kansas National Guard, Retirement finally allowed him to follow what he truly loved, which is helping people in need. I became a Shriner in 1988, and we were at a meeting where this young child went, and she was burned by a gasoline fire. Gasoline ignited out of a water heater, and she was burned about 95% of her body. Very timid young lady. Uh, she held on to her mother very closely, of course, and, you know, burns are probably the some of the worst disfigurements you can get because it's it's just not good but Shriners hospitals fix the inside as well as the out. Lynn's compassion wasn't exclusive to Shriners and the children in their hospitals but to the soldiers and the airmen that he loved helping. Lynn Holt dove into helping the enlisted association of the National Guard of Kansas. Continually working in the ever-shrinking budgets that states have, we're you know, trying to educate them on what it is that our soldiers need, uh, our enlisted soldiers. And it's our cumulative voice that gets to our people at our state legislators. We have guards members and members of our association, all four corners, everywhere in between. And that's, that's our job is to, to champion for our soldiers. And that's what we do. Above all, retired Sergeant Major Lynn Holt owes his success for a great military career and accomplishments after retirement to his family. During my entire time of the military, I can't say how much that I appreciate all of the support and being there for me and, and every one of the decisions that I've made in my military career. I had 100% backing I can't say I thank you enough and how much I love you enough to my children and my grandchildren because they were there for me also. Person that stands behind you that, that really props you up when you need to be and that's your spouse. And I can't say how much that I appreciate how much I love my wife Andrea for giving me the nudges in the right place at the right time. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome our next inductee into the Kansas National Guard Hall of Fame, retired Sergeant Major Lynn Holt. <laughs>